بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونصلي ونسلم على رسول النبي الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In discussing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the benevolence and the, and the reward and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah gives us today in the verses we recited a beautiful qaida and a beautiful rule in terms of where reward and sin is recorded and documented by the angels. So just before that, Allah says, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ The closing verses of Baqarah, you know, وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوا يُحَاسِبَكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ And if you conceal anything, if you expose anything or you conceal anything, يُحَاسِبَكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ Upon that, Allah Ta'ala is going to take you to task, take us to account. So it means whatever is apparent on our a'mal, in our actions, and uh, physically, verbally, etc. And similarly, that which we conceal in terms of our thoughts as well. Muhasibkum bihillah. Allah is going to take you to account for that. Hisab. So this ayah was revealed and this was extremely difficult and hard bearing on the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. So, Ya Rasulullah, will we be taken to account on that which is inside our hearts also? I mean, this is harsh, this is a bit heavy, you know. Sahaba radiallahu anhum, yani, subhanallah, may Allah reward them. That is why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the riwayah says that Allah Ta'ala looked at all of the qulub of entire mankind and for, uh, for his nubuwa, Allah Ta'ala chose the best of the hearts. And similarly, for the companions of the anbiya, Allah Ta'ala chose the best of the hearts to be their companions. So similarly, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they were chosen and selected to be the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It wasn't just a matter of chance. It wasn't just a matter of you know, uh, okay, it happened and they got lucky. No, it's no luck story there. This was by by deliberate selection of Allah azza wa jal in order to be the first recipients of the wahi. Hence, their their ter- terbiyat and their discipline was done immediate. And they were straightened immediately. So they became qudwa and they became guiding, guiding stars and lights for mankind to qiyamah. So they came to Rasulullah, Rasulullah will be taken to account of that which we conceal in our hearts as well. This is a bit difficult. Yeah. You know, Sahaba radiallahu anhum, their fast they didn't start from dawn until dusk. Their fast began from the night when they took the iftar. They had permission to continue eating until they would go to bed. The minute they hit the sack, as they say, finish, the start begins. The minute they put their head down and close their eyes, the fast begins. Until the next day dusk. And subhanAllah, that started becoming a little bit difficult on the Sahaba. Why? Because they were, they were people of labor and hard work and toil. So they would work the fields and the orchards and then they would come in the evening. And then sometimes, you know, you just put your head down to catch a bit of a snooze. And then you snoozed. It happens to anyone, you know, subhanAllah. Sometimes just before taraweeh we come, I'm going to put my head down for three minutes, just three minutes, sometimes four minutes, not more than that. Just allow the blood to regulate once again, to calm the nerves. We need that. Amanatan. Allah bless, bless us all. Sometimes you'll see in my taraweeh, I take off tent, five before, before, before taraweeh, three minutes. Subhanallah. So after a hard days of work and you decide to do that, that's the end of it. Next morning you wake up. So they, yani we got our, our deen after their hard sacrifice. After their hard sacrifice. So nevertheless, فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ They after Allah Ta'ala revealed, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Allah Ta'ala will not put a burden and taklif on anyone more than that which they can bear. لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ So whatever you have done, for you is that in terms of reward and whatever you have perpetrated in sense that is for you in, and you have to bear the consequences of that. So that which occurs inside of the heart and goes on internally will not be taken to account into task. So on that the ulama make, make mention the different stages of thought and an intention. The different martaba and stages of qasd intention are five. The first is hajis. Hajis is just like a thought that enters the mind 
before before anything it has gone. It's like a, just, just that, that gush of wind that comes in poof, and out the other side. Hajis. It, it did not even it, it didn't pause in, in your in your soul. It didn't you didn't have time to even like you know sometimes people look up. When you're looking up like you're thinking inside and you're thinking to yourself. You look up like, like what do you look up for? Everyone does that. You know, you look up like you're thinking to yourself and you're talking to yourself and you're like pondering. You didn't have any time for all of that. The thought came and just went out. It could happen in your salah, it could happen while you're at work or anything like that. Sometimes it's so fast that you even, you forgot what you, would, you know, hey, what was that? That's hajis. Second is, فَخَاطِرٌ فَحَدِيثٌ nafsi فَاسْتَمِعَا It came inside, entered your mind, it lingered slightly, momentarily lingered on. And then you just, you know, shook your head, moved on. Forgot about it. Go on. Khatir. So the first was Hajis, second, second level was Khatir. Fakhatirun, fahadithun nafsi, fastami'a. Third level is Hadithun nafs. Hadithun nafs is like when you start talking to yourself. You start having this internal discussion. And then you do, you know, so we are, we are just amazing. Mankind is just amazing. We just plan everything. <laughs> Especially when you're having an issue with somebody. And then you're like, you're like, okay, if he meets me, that's what I'm going to say. That's what he's going to say. Okay, if he says, I'll say this here. And you, you plan that entire fight out. The whole scenario, plan it out in your mind. Hadith and nafs. Or likewise, the other way also. Talk to the Shabab and they'll tell you. They saw one auntie one day and finished. They were married to that lady already. Hadith and nafs. Talking, having this internal discussion. Again, so it happened all inside you. You didn't talk to anyone. You didn't share it with anyone. It's just a story that came in. It lingered on. After the lingering stage, and then you had this internal discussion and debate. And then it went away. The hadith on this is number three. Number four is ham. Now you had this internal discussion and this debate. And then you're like, okay, you know what? I think it's good. Let me go. I'm going to go for it. And you made this, this uh, kind of like this weak, weak intention. It wasn't something firm. You went through the scenario. You played it out in your mind. And you said, okay, we'll, we, we'll, let's go for it. But you, you haven't like, you're not like resolute in English. You know, resolute. So on that they say, these four are forgiven by Allah. These four are Number five is what is known as Azam. Azam is that firm resolution in the heart. So the thought came in, it lingered on, you went through the and you played the scenario out, and you had the discussion, and then you made this intention, and then you said, right, that's it. You, you made your entire plan and you're going for it. That's your Azam, that's your resolute, the resolution. But all of this is still within the framework of intention. You haven't executed it. So all of the previous four are forgiven by Allah Azza wa Jal if it falls under the remit of, of sin, of course, vice. The fifth one is that on which is which is known as Azam. Yani you have you are firmly resolute in your in your execution of your plan. It could turn out that taqdeer, or some people might call it luck or otherwise, it planned it panned out or the or the other ways. It didn't happen. For whatever reason. So you plan how you're going to you know, sneak through the window and you're going to slowly steal the car and make sure your father's got the EV so when you start it, they don't hear anything. you done everything. For the youth today, nowadays, be careful in this country. You take your, your EVs, you won't know they went and came back also. Previously, you had those guzzlers, you know, you press one time, accelerated the whole car shakes. You drive one kilometer, $50 gone. Especially those big V8s, you know. SubhanAllah. Abraham knows it. So you, you played it out, you made this resolution and you're like just waiting for the time. Okay, today, 12 o'clock, they'll all be sleeping, I'll check the time nicely, we'll sort it out. So that's Azam. On this resolution of yours, now comes the Taklif. So there's, uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, uh, there's reward or the other ways. So Allah Ta'ala then says, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَلَا يُجَزَى إِلَّا مِثْلَا وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in the hadith of Qudsi إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ ثُمَّ بَيَّنَ ذَلِكَ Allah Ta'ala has 
document Allah Taala has uh, explained to us what is uh, what is known as good re rewards and sins, and Allah explains it. That person who makes an intention, although the word here is ham used, but we're talking of the resolution, that firm intention of doing a good. But it so happened that at the time when you were about to take out this fifty dollars that you made a pledge to give to the masjid, something happened. You either at the at the spur of the moment you remember that you needed to get some groceries and you're gonna go home and you could be in more troubles. So you rather, you know what, Allah, you can sort me out. My wife, I can't be in that troubles, you know. So you went and you used that fifty dollars and you got the groceries. Okay, you didn't have you didn't you didn't execute that good plan of yours for the sadaqah. On that intention, one entire hasanatun kamila is recorded. You haven't even done it, but you were firmly resolute to do it. It so happened that taqdeer happened and you got diverted, but you, you weren't able to discharge that. I'm giving an example of sadaqah, of course. Many examples it could be. So just on that intention, Allah is writing for you an entire reward. Hasanatun kamila. But if you go to the next stage, you made this resolution, you came and then you took out your 50 and you put it in the box and then you carried on home. So you intended it, you were resolute, you were resolute upon it and you executed your plan of goodness. Then Allah Ta'ala documents that as 10 rewards complete. Man jaa hasanati falaw ashu amthaliya. The qaida of deen is one good deed is multiplied by 10 for every single person. Regardless of your stages of piety. After this, now comes the stages of piety. So for everyone, the, 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 the strongest and the weakest believer, the most pious and the most wretched, everyone gets the 10 rewards. Based on now your sacrifice and your intention, what in your toiling, comes the multiplication of the rewards. And they upon is multiplied to 700 times and many, 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 many more folds. So obviously the sacrifice of the Sahaba anhu cannot be equated with our sacrifice. Nabi Sallallahu said, one mud of theirs, mud is like uh, almost just half a kilogram, or 700, 750 milliliters, plus minus. One, say a half a kilo of their, their sadaqa is equivalent to, to the amount of Uhud. Your, and if, you, that is, uh, if we had to do this chart, so if we had to give to the extent of Mount Uhud in Sadaqah and Charity, it would not equate to even half a kilo of Sahaba. Because they came from a position of extreme hardship and extreme sacrifice and extreme sincerity. So based on your sacrifice and sincerity and devotion, etc. Now you know, you, you made an intention, they talk of it in the masjid, like you know what, the people of Gaza are suffering. And then you say, uh, you know what, at the, at the same time, you know that this is like your last 50 for the week. And come to, you got like three days left and you don't know where you're going to, you know, you don't have milk maybe at home or bread at home. And like, you know what, Allah is going to give this out. So that sacrifice of yours cannot be equated to the person who's got a nice fat bank balance and he's giving out the 50. So each of you are going to get the 10 rewards, of course. But then comes after that, the ihsan of Allah Ta'ala, multiplication to 700 and many minimum fold. Flip side. You made the firm resolution to do a sin. The azam we talked of, right? You were resolute, 100%. 12 o'clock tonight, midnight, it's weekend. Parents are going to be sleeping. I'm going to sort, them, sort it out. Sneak through the window and go and come. So you made this resolution. At the time, you did not execute it. Twelve o'clock came, you were resolute, you were going to do it. And suddenly you said, no, nah, leave it, we'll see again. And you, you, you cancelled it. So by virtue of your cancellation of that azam of yours, Allah is recording a good deed for you. Hasanatun kamila. A completed good deed. A completed good deed. And then unfortunately, if you succumb to that intention of yours, that resolution of yours, and you happen to execute your plan of sin, then Allah Ta'ala will document for you only one sin. Only one sin, not multiplied. If Allah wanted, Allah could have said, you know what, I'm giving you 10 rewards, so I should give you 10 sins as well, right? It should be equal for equal. Allah's fadhan is so much on insan. There is no creation who can be more patient on any form of verbal and, and uh, ibadati uh, abuse than Allah Ta'ala. 
Because Allah is the one who is feeding you and giving you to drink and giving you to breathe and allowing you to live, etc., etc. The favors go on and on. And yet people are causing shirk with Allah. And yet people are not doing their salah. And yet people are not coming on to the deen. So there's no creation, there's no person, there's no that can be more patient and tolerant than Allah Ta'ala on, on abuse than the, uh, to, and that, that is hurled towards Allah than Allah Azza wa We will be able to tolerate to a certain level after that, you know what, I'm done. Finish, that's it. I'm ending my resignation. I'm going to tell you a mouthful. That's it. So I said, I'm going to give a talaq, etc. etc. Allah is, Allah is, Ihsan is such. He just gives and gives and gives and gives. And the kuffar, they, he gives them and he gives them and he gives them. Subhanallah. Yet they are disbelieving in Allah. Yet they are committing shirk. Yet they are killing Allah's bandas and Allah's servants. Yet they are desecrating the Quran. Yet they are doing so much and Allah is giving them. Because the dunya means nothing. So in, on your evil intention, you did not execute. Allah is giving you a good reward for that. Because it was by way of that same heart in which you decided to do that sin, you cancelled that sin intention. So that in itself, that in itself is a rewardable deed. And if you happen to do it, then Allah only writes for you one. But the karam of Allah doesn't end there. If you happen to, to commit this sin, and you then immediately follow it up. And if you follow up the sin by way of any good deed, then the good deed will wash away the, the ill effects of the sin. So the ulama make mention that the sin is not recorded, it's pending. So it will be put in your account, but it's putting pending the status, action plan for the angels, action plan. It's pending. If you follow the sin with another sin, then the first sin is recorded as, as active. If you follow that sin up with a good deed, then that one is cancelled. Cancelled. How much more devoted? That is why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Aisha asked him, Radiallahu Anha, Ya Rasulullah, why do you stand in, in Salah and Tahajjud? He would stand so long that his feet would become swollen in Ibadah. You know, sometimes we do Qiyam. And we get tired and we, you know, we're all the time dancing up and down and, you know, massaging the legs. We can't manage that one, two hours. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to stand until his feet used to become swollen. And you would say that, you know what, he, so even after being used to it, he would stand so many hours that his feet would become swollen. So say, he said, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا shakura? Should I not be a grateful servant of my Lord? How much fadl of Allah is upon me? Should I not be a grateful servant of Allah? أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا shakura? Should we be not be grateful servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah has given us life. Allah has given us the ability just to breathe. One of my friends, some years ago, he did a calculation. At age 40, you would, uh, you would be owing financially to Allah ta'ala plus minus, I don't know, 43 billion or something in dollars. Taking in account inflation and everything. Just on the air you breathe. But as an exercise, he did that. He took the cost of, air, of, of oxygen and he took inflation, deflation, etc. from the time you were born. You're looking at well, plus minus in the billions. You would owe Allah Ta'ala. Allah is allowing you to breathe in and breathe out. This is the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That is why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man fi fi jasadi Who wakes up in the morning, fi sirbi. You are safe. Fi jasadi. All your body parts and faculties are, are functional. It has happened so many times within your families. You may know of people, of children. I know personally in, in family, the, the child woke up and 10 years of age, the legs are not working. And then a few months of, of, uh, of cure and uh, medication and stuff like it, hospitalization, and then it comes back again. Imagine your eyes don't open. Eyes are closed. Imagine your eyesight is not restored or the faculty of speech or, or taste or hearing. In the huqu to yawmihi. One day, one of my doctors from Musallis in Houghton was a doctor. He woke up in the morning, went to the bathroom as usual. And in the bathroom, he saw on, the, on his right-hand side eye, peripheral vision, a lot of insects. So he thought maybe somebody left the window open and there was cockroaches and insects on the wall. Little did he realize that his peripheral vision was cut off. He woke up one morning. And on the road, he's driving and he meets with an accident. Suddenly, because now your peripheral vision is he's lost his peripheral vision. 
And as a result, he met with an accident and then he went for, for tests and everything and he found this is what happened. For the rest of his life, he lost his peripheral vision. But subhanallah, mu'afan fi jasadi. Indahu qutu yawmihi. You have your day's supply of food. Qut is enough just to keep you alive. Today, people of Gaza, they are the children and the people, they are, they are making bread out of animal fodder. They are eating carrion that they can find around lying on the streets. They don't have that. Not forget they, they don't have that one meal just to survive. Yazan or Yazan, 10 year old boy, he's the, he died and he became shaheed of emaciation. His body withered away and he became like a skeleton. No, 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 two weeks ago. For this person, it is as if the entire dunya and the entire world has been placed in, in front of you. So, afala akuna abdan shakura. Should I not be a grateful servant of Allah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us tawfiq, grant us the ability to come onto ibadah and ta'ah and amal and stay with him.